I give the call to the member for Holt. Deputy Speaker, Deputy Speaker, I rise uh, to speak to and, uh, and particularly commend the member for Latrobe's uh, private member's motion that deals with our joint concern about uh, the, the average number of suicide deaths in Australia per year. We've heard the figure of 24-15. It's an incredibly disturbing figure. We know that medical experts agree that each death is virtually those 24-15 is avoidable and that we know that suicide is the leading cause of deaths in Australia for men under 44 and women under 34. We also know it's imperative that all levels of government, whether they be local, state, territory or federal, do more to properly support and fund mental health in the future. Deputy Speaker, as the member for the tribe knows, we've been hit hard, very hard, by the devastating impacts of suicide in our area. And our community has dealt with this devastation with courage, with resolve, and with determination. Through wonderful initiatives like the Coming Together to Prevent Youth Suicide Facebook page, started by students affected by suicide and their loss, to participation in a groundbreaking forum that was hosted, and I hosted with Pat McGorry in 2012, that was covered by Four Corners, which was called There Was No 3G in Heaven. Deputy Speaker, we know that suicide obviously is an important subject, but here's some other things that we know. We know that after the game-changing Burdekin report in 1993, the mental health treatment devolved from being solely treated at an institution to being treated in the community. Here's what we also know. We also know the mental health service providers have never been appropriately funded by any government to provide that service to the community. And as a consequence, some of our best and brightest mental health service providers leave the public system and access to treatment becomes much harder. We also know, Deputy Speaker, that in Australia, the governments collectively spend approximately 7 per cent of its health budget on mental health. We also know that other comparable first health uh, world countries spend up to 14 per cent. So in essence, we're spending something like a third world country on mental health services to our people in this country, and that is completely uh, disgraceful. We also know that only one in five people suffering from a mental illness seek treatment. We know also that we continue to underfund mental health research in this country, even though we have some of the best mental health researchers in the world. And we know that the stigma around mental health illness continues. Has it abated in 20 years since Burdekin produced this groundbreaking report? Yes, it has. Is there more to be done to ameliorate the stigma? Of course there is. Are people still dying because of the stigma associated with mental illness? Yes, they are. Should we accept that? No, we shouldn't. And that's why I'm a strong supporter of Patrick McGorry's New Australians for Mental Health campaign. In fact, I had the honour of launching this campaign along with Professor McGorry on the 23rd of August 2014 at Village Cinemas in Westfield Fountain Gate. This event was attended by nearly 200 people, some of whom have been personally affected by the loss of a loved one due to suicide. Now, Australians for Mental Health aims to reduce the stigma and it calls for an increase in mental health funding. It calls for improved access to mental health care and it calls for a reduction in the suicide toll by 25 per cent of its current rate, which is 2361 deaths per annum by 2016, and by 50 per cent of its current rate by 2020. Deputy Speaker, if millions of dollars and new road safety programs like wearing seat belts that were introduced in 1973 had reduced the national road toll, it's reduced it, Deputy Speaker, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, from 3,798 deaths in 1970 to 1,193 deaths in 2013. Deputy Speaker, if a similar campaign like this national campaign was embarked upon by governments, federal, state and local, we would reduce the national suicide rate in the coming years ahead. At a local level, the City of Casey has made some important progress and we've made progress in reducing the stigma associated with mental illness and suicide, and particularly youth suicide, and providing some new mental health services. The, um, the member for Latrobe was mentioning the headspace at Dandenong and the new headspace in Fountain Gate, which is in the member for Latrobe's electorate, but will be accessed by people from my constituency, uh, constituency and also Latrobe. These are two very important services but they're the start. I think there will be an early psychosis intervention centre also rolled, rolled over the top of the Dandenong service as well as the Fountain Gate service. Um, 
Deputy Speaker, I commend the member from Latrobe uh, for his words. This is a campaign where if governments don't take action, literally lives will be lost. I commend the motion I and, uh, and this particular motion. Thank the member for Holt.